thank you, Lord, this morning for the Word of God. We pray, God, that you'd help us rightly divide the Word of truth, Lord, and preach with the power of God. We need more than anything else this morning. God, we need the power of the Spirit of God. And we pray that you'd help us and bless us. And Lord, anoint us with that power, God, that we might preach. In Jesus' name, amen. So in 2 Timothy, we find these words, uh, beginning with verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Paul is telling Timothy, what you've heard of me, please carry it on. What you've heard me preach, please commit that to faithful men, that they might too commit that to others, that the gospel might be spread and the gospel might be shared for generations to come. And he says to him in verse number 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He looks at Timothy and said, Timothy, you're in a battle. You're in a war and you, we, I want to encourage you to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, friend, we, again we say we're living in perilous times. And he goes on in chapter number 3 and, and predicts some of the perils that are going to come upon this generation, which some of them are already, are already upon us. And the perils that you face, uh, men shall be lovers of their own selves, coveters, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, Paul, Paul is writing a, a letter that, it ha, that has very strong meaning to it to Timothy. Timothy, be a good soldier. The bottom line is, Timothy, be a good soldier. Now, Paul had his own testimony of being a soldier. Paul knew what it was to fight the fight. He knew what it was to be in prison. He knew that no matter what had come upon him, he knew that he, he uh, would, uh, you know, encourage Timothy to go through the same things that he had gone through. In, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse 23, let me read a verse here. Paul says this, Are they ministers of Christ? So I am I, uh, I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes, above measures, in prisons more frequent, in death oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Paul is describing here the things that he had been through for the cross of, cause of Christ. And friend, I'm afraid in our day that we don't have a lot of good soldiers of the cross. I'm afraid we don't have a lot of good soldiers that are willing to face and to, and to accept whatever's necessary in their life to be a good soldier because, listen, friend, we're in an army, we're in a battle, and the only thing that's going to count when we stand before God is how we reacted and how we were counted as a good soldier. What does it take to be a good soldier? What does it take for you and I to stand in this battle? Listen, we need to armor up. Ephesians tells us we need to armor up. We need to get on the armor of God and we need to get in the fight and not run from the fight. We need to be in the battle and not complacent sitting by the wayside. We preach to you about Gideon and how that those uh, 20 some thousand men, because they didn't want to be there, they went back to the house. And then uh, another group of men, because they didn't know how to act in battle, uh, they were dismissed. But Gideon's 300 men were men that were watchful, men that were had courage 
and men that would fight the battle, and that's what God used to win that battle with Gideon. Not everybody that names the name of Christ, not everybody that's a Christian turns out to be a good soldier. But I hope and pray that your heart's desire today is that you be a good soldier. God help me to be a good soldier. And if God puts me in the heat of the battle, God help me on the front lines to stand for what's right and stand for what's true because this world needs the truth. That's what it needs. This world needs the gospel more than anything else. Our world needs the gospel. Our country needs the gospel today more than anything else. There's nothing else going to straighten our country up, I'll just tell you. There's nothing else going to straighten up the mess that we're in other than the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men's hearts right with God will do right, amen? But men full of the devil will do after the devil, amen? And I'm telling you, friend, today... We need soldiers of the cross. You say, but sometimes I feel like I'm the only one, to, the, the only one standing. The Bible says, having done all to stand, stand, therefore. And friend, we need to be good soldiers of the cross. You know, sometimes I've been guilty of what they call pussyfooting around. You know, trying to, trying just to, to, to get around something rather than to face it head on. Trying to tiptoe around the situation rather than calling it what it is. Maybe trying to tiptoe around a sin rather than calling a sin what it is. It's sin. Amen? Listen, a good soldier's going to go head on into battle. A good soldier's going to go right in there and not because he's courageous in him own self, but because he's courageous knowing that he's got a job to do, that his country is depending on him to fight for our freedom. And a good soldier, even though fearful, will go right ahead and do what's right because he wants to be a good soldier and be discharged from that armed service as being a good soldier. Honorably discharged. Now, friend, as a soldier, I want to be honorably charged when I go into heaven. Amen. I'm not going to be discharged. I'm just going to get promoted, amen? A good soldier just gets promoted into the, uh, you know, into heaven. Uh, a soldier that's not a good soldier but still saved, still going to go to heaven, but they won't receive those, those rewards that a good soldier will receive at the judgment seat of Christ. What kind of soldier are you today? Are you a soldier? You're just on the outside kind of looking in, and maybe sometimes you wish you were a good soldier. Maybe sometimes you look at others that are fighting the fight and say, man, I wish I could do that. There's everybody in here can be a good soldier. But you know, a good soldier is one when he's, he might not have wanted to be in the service when he was called into the service. He might not, when they draft, you know, when they had to draft, they draft anybody, their number come up, they draft them into the service. And as long as they spent, they're going into service. They might not have wanted to, but they were called in, they were drafted in. And I've never talked to one that's drafted in that said, I wish I hadn't been drafted. Also, I was proud to serve our country. Amen? Now, as far as, as far as preaching goes, I might not have volunteered to preach, but God called me, and there's nothing else I could do about it. Amen? So I want to go out of here being, being as good a preacher as God can make out of me. Amen? Amen? Listen, you chose to be saved by the grace of God. You chose to be a soldier in this army. So, friend... You chose it, amen. Let's get in it and fight the fight. Let's fight the good fight of faith these last days that we live in, amen. God needs good soldiers. God wants good soldiers, men that will, that will uh, carry the, the, the torch for him, women that will be in the battle for him and fight and for what is right in this world that we live in. What does it take to be a good soldier? Number one, it takes to be a good soldier, it takes one that a soldier signs up. Now you signed up for being a soldier when you got saved by the grace of God. How many of you got saved as a child? Raise your hand. About everybody in here. How many got saved later on in life, teenager or above? About a third as many. 
How many of you know by the grace of God that you're saved? Raise your hand and say amen. So I tell about everybody in here. So guess what you are? You've owned up to it this morning. You signed up to fight. Amen. It's time to fight. Amen. It's time to put up a battle. It's time to get it. Get out of the foxhole. Old soldier that I knew that fought in World War II. He's dead and gone now. But he fought the battle. He told me, and I, he's told me some of his stories. Some of them he never revealed to me. And, and, and never would because of probably the things that he's been through. But he told me one time, he said, Preacher, he said, I fought for, th I think it was three days and nights straight without a lick of sleep, he said, because it was kill or be killed. It was fight or, or not. And he said, I fought for three days straight without having rest, without having anything. And he said, but I, and you know what? He came back alive. Amen. He said they sent a group of people, a group of soldiers in there to take our place. And he said when they hit the battlefield, he said they hit the foxhole. He wouldn't put their head up out of the foxhole. And he just had to, nobody else, he had to stand by. Are you going to have your head down the foxhole or leave it to somebody else to fight the battle? Or are you going to be a good soldier and fight? Pretty simple question, ain't it? You enlisted when you got saved into God's army. You enlisted to be a soldier. And so we see that a good soldier signs up and he don't know what's ahead of him. I, I signed up when I was uh, probably 17 years old. I signed up. I never did go. I never did join. But I, I went and talked to the recruiter. You know why I didn't go? It wasn't the perfect will of God. I was going. But it just never worked out. And I didn't go. And and, uh, but it wasn't that I wasn't willing to go. It just wasn't in the perfect will of God. And I look back now and see how that wasn't in God's plan for my life. But I see that I'm saved by the grace of God. I, I got saved in not knowing what I would face as a Christian. You don't know what you're going to face. You say, well, preacher, I know what I've been through, but you don't know what you're going through. You say, well, I look back and see some battles I've had. You don't know the battles you're about to have. Amen. And I'll tell you, as a soldier, if the war is going on, you're either in a battle right now or you're getting a little rest for a little season. But you're, if the war is going on, you're, sooner or later you're headed back into the battle. And it's not easy. But you know the easiest thing for a child of God to do is not, not to want any controversy. It's just to let the battle be fought around him and never, never get involved. Let somebody else do it. Let somebody else do that. I'm not going to get in the battle. I, I don't want the controversy. Let somebody else fight the battle. I don't want to be the witness. Let somebody else do it for me. A good soldier signs up not knowing what is ahead of him. And then a good soldier, what he does, a good soldier shows up. He shows up to fight. He shows up for the battle. A good soldier doesn't go AWOL. A good soldier don't, don't go away without leave. A good soldier is in the battle and stays in the battle. A good soldier attends the meetings. A good soldier listens to the captain, listens to the sergeant, listens to the general. Do you want to be a good soldier? If you're going to be a good soldier, you've got to show up for battle. Amen. Amen, preacher. When it gets too quiet, I'll just open and get one out of the pulpit down here. Amen. <laughs> Seems like when you get around the Baptist church and get around talking about being faithful and showing up uh, for the battle and showing up at the house of God, it gets real quiet. Amen. You know why? Because a lot of people know they're guilty of not showing up. Amen. I'm going to show up by the help of God and by the grace of God, whether I want to or not, whether I like to or not, by the help of God, I'm going to show up. And if as many people here this morning would determine, I'm going to get in the battle and I'm going to show up for service and I'm going to be there in the fight without letting the devil give you every excuse in the world not to be faithful and not to come to the house of God, then guess what happened? Amen. We'd see more of the power of God. We'd see more of the battle being won. And friend, we'd have a lot of more soldiers in the company with us. Amen. Amen. Has a mouthful and some of you looking at me with your jaw drop. And I'm just telling you the truth today. And you know the truth. And if you'll accept the truth. And if you'll learn to be faithful to God at the house of God. God will use a good soldier. But he ain't going to use one that ain't going to be faithful. Amen. 
who said move on. I'm going to when I get through. Amen. You got to be a good soldier. Well, preacher, oh, I'm, well, preacher, I, I just got this to do that I can't do no other time. What's more important than God? Amen. What's more important than the house of the Lord? Crickets again. What's more important than people saying, I want to listen, there are things that keep you away from church, I know. But I'm telling you something, friend. A lot of people use the least little thing. Oh, I'm not going to church tonight. My ain't grown toenail is hurting. <laughs> and it hurts. Listen, I know things like this happen, and I know that. And my wife, she could have come to church a lot of times with her, with her knee, but she couldn't sit through it, and I understand that. But some people use anything, any excuse not to go to church. Well, I'm on vacation every Sunday. Good grief. If you're working a job and you get a vacation every, every two or three weeks, I won't go to work where you're working. I don't get that kind of time off. But preacher, Sunday's the only day I've got that I can do this, that, and the other. Sunday's the only day I got. Amen. I can get to come to the house of God and be of God's people. You say, well, you like it. Hallelujah, I like it. Amen. Praise the Lord, I like it. Amen. You know why? Because my family's here. And if I can't talk like this in front of my family, I might as well give it up and quit. Amen. And if my, sometimes my family might get mad at me because I'm telling them the truth. But ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. A good soldier shows up. battle for the instruction now next time you lay out a church because of something that ain't really that important I hope the Holy Spirit, if you're saved I hope the Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of you and tells you listen you say now why would you do that because I've been there and I've done that now I'm not proud of it but I've related the story of my life how for a while I got out of church but when it comes Sunday morning Sunday night and Wednesday night I knew my place was at the house of God. And you know how I knew? Because the sweet spirit of God down on the inside reminded me that I ought to be in the house of God. Sometimes I was out fishing. Sometimes I was out on the lake. But you know what? When it comes church time, you, you know, I'm, boy, I'm in deep, ain't I? You know why I don't have a bass boat? I'll tell you why I don't have a bass boat. I, number one, I can't afford one, okay? But number two, when would I use it? Now, I will, about the only time I'd have would be to lay out of church on Sunday and go fishing in my bass boat. I'm not going to have one for that reason because it might be a temptation to me. I got in trouble on a boat one time on Sunday. That's why I say this. I got in bad trouble on a boat on Sunday when I should have been in church. And when I was going down in the water and the ski was about to hit me in the face and it hit me in the face, the Lord said, you know what's going through my mind? I ought to be at the house of God. This wouldn't be happening if I was in church. You say, that went through your mind just as plain as day. I'll tell you something, friend. If you're going to be in the battle, you're going to have to get up and go. Amen. You're going to have to fight the battle. Some people show up for church and they think they're doing God a favor. Well, well here I am at church. Everybody say, hey, everybody say hello to me. I'm here. <laughs> Ain't we having fun? I'll tell you something, friend. God wants soldiers that will show up at the house of God and soldiers that will show up for a battle. God wants soldiers. A good soldier not only will show up, but a good soldier is going to stand up. Instead of hitting the foxhole when it, instead of hitting the foxhole when the battle's on, they'll stand up and they'll stand up for what's right and they'll stand up and fight. Sometimes you might have to stand up around your family and disagree with something they're doing because it's not what the Bible would have you to do. It's not what God would have you to do. And it's going to compromise your beliefs or compromise your faith. I want to tell you, just stand up. Amen. Just stand up for what's right. A good soldier stand up. A good soldier will, will, will want to be in the battle. A good soldier will want to fight the fight of faith. So a good soldier stands up for their faith. They stand up for their standards of being a Christian. The Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're going the way the world's going, you're going the way that 
uh, 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 you know, the devil's crowd wants to go, then you're not standing up as a soldier. Sometimes you've got to go against the current to be a good soldier. Sometimes you've got to go against what everybody else is doing to be a good soldier, to be a faithful soldier to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to stand up for our faith and stand up for our standards. And listen, we have to stand up as a good soldier. We've got to stand up for what we believe. What do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Say amen. amen. Do you believe that God is the only God, the only true God? Say amen. amen. Well, listen, in this world that we're living in, you're going to have to stand up for those things and let people know you believe there's only one God and there's only one Savior, there's only one Lord, and Jesus Christ is the answer to man's problems. You've got to stand up for what you believe. As a good soldier, you've got to stand up. I've got a couple more and we'll be through. A good soldier is willing to sacrifice. Now, there's a lot of men back here buried in this cemetery that I walked around when their flags were on their grave. Many of them died in battle. You can tell by, the, uh, by their ages that many of them died in battle. And you know what? They went into that battle knowing that they might have to sacrifice themselves and they sacrificed their lives for my freedom. They, Paul said, I'm willing. He said, I, I know that my time is at hand. And Paul died a martyr's death because he was willing to sacrifice his life for what he believed. Are you that willing to sacrifice your life for what you believe? It, listen, you say, well, that'll never happen. Believe me, it may happen. It may come to our country where we'll be asked to either accept, you know, accept another religion and deny Christ or to be... Uh, to be punished and tortured for the cause of Christ. A good soldier is willing to sacrifice. They're willing to sacrifice their time. You say, well, I've got 24 hours in a day, so many, 365 days a year, and God gives you every one of them. You ain't got no time of your own. You know that God gives you every day that you've got. He don't have to give you another day. He don't have to give you the rest of this day. He don't have to let you wake up in the morning. Should we not, amen, should we not give what, God, what time God has given us? Should we not give it to him and say, Lord, use me? And God will. We need so God needs soldiers that are willing to sacrifice for his cause. Listen, this half-hearted Christian service is not going to get anything accomplished for the Lord. This halfway in and halfway out business, God said he'd spew it out of his mouth because you're neither hot nor warm you, or, or cold. You're lukewarm. God said he'll spew it out of his mouth. It makes God sick. And I've been praying, Lord, help me not to fall into that category. God, help me that I be hot and on fire for God. God, we need your power. You know what Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church needs? More than it needs more people and more than it needs more money. It needs the power of God. Amen. And we've experienced more and more of that here lately. And we need more and more of the power of God. If we're to do anything for the cause of Christ, we must have the power of God. I must have the power of God. I must be bold to preach the gospel. Paul said he, he was bold to preach the gospel. He encouraged Timothy to be bold to preach the gospel, to stand for what's right. Political correctness has gone amuck in a while in our country. And sad to say, political correctness has come down in a lot of churches where people are afraid to speak the truth, where men are afraid to speak the truth or preach the truth because they might lose their job, might lose their, their income, might lose their standing among the people of the church. But I want to tell you something, amen. God called me to preach, amen. God called me to preach the gospel. And by his help, I'll preach the gospel. Now, a good soldier keeps his eyes focused on the prize. A good soldier sacrifices, and a good soldier sets off with his eyes fastened on the prize. And that prize is one day to get home to be with Jesus, to finish the race. But always in the side of that good soldier of the cross is the cross. All the time when that soldier is going into battle, he's looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's looking to the cross. Friend, I'll tell you, if you're here today and you don't know what the cross means, it means your salvation. 
If you're lost and you don't understand what the cross is, it's, it's your salvation. It's where Jesus died and bled for you that you might have eternal life. It's where Jesus died and made it possible for you to be in the army of the Lord Jesus Christ and be his soldier. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in, a, in an empty tomb, a barred tomb. Three days he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he ascended back to the right hand of the Father that whosoever shall believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, shall be saved. So a good soldier sets off. Many, many mourn when a, good, when a soldier goes off to war. Many family members mourn with good reason. <coughs> but I'm telling you something, friend. All those soldiers that have gone and come back, most of them say they'd do it again. Well, let me tell you something. God needs good soldiers. God wants good soldiers. He can do the bad. Hey, listen, God don't have to have me, but he wants me to be his servant. He wants me to carry the torch. He wants me to be engaged in the battle. Let me ask you, are you engaged in the battle today? Are you a good soldier or are you on the sideline? Looking in. There's nobody in here that can't be a good qualified soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody. Everybody can be a good soldier if you'll just get in the fight. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. We've tried our best to preach what you laid on our heart. And I pray, God, that the message would get into our hearts, get into my heart. Lord, help me to be a good soldier. Help me to carry the, help me to carry the banner of the Lord Jesus and carry it high. Lord, if there's someone here lost without you, I pray that you touch them, Lord, with the power of God. Lord, for someone here today you've touched, Lord, for the need to get in the battle, I pray today, Father, they, Lord, they make it right with you and get into the battle and be determined to fight the fight of faith. While every head's bowed, no one looking around.